Exodus 3.10 Then the Lord said to Moses, Go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You will lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said, Who am I to stand before Pharaoh? When the people of God were in bondage, God looked to an ordinary man to be used in an extraordinary way. Of all the people on earth that God could have chosen to give this mission to, he chose Moses, a murderous fugitive man with a bad temper. Upon hearing this, all Moses could say was, I am not worthy. Even though Moses was just making an excuse, he was dead on. He wasn't worthy. He wasn't capable. He wasn't extraordinary. He was the least. Every once in a while, it is good for us to remember that we are not worthy of the call of God. The Lord doesn't need any of us to do something extraordinary, but in his sovereignty, he has allowed us to be used. We have made extraordinary all about ourselves, instead of realizing that only God is extraordinary. I believe that just as in the days of Moses, God is looking for someone that he can use to save this generation. But it's only going to happen if we realize that God, and only God, is extraordinary. Moses couldn't believe what was happening to him. Even as he stood in the midst of God's wonder and glory represented in the burning bush, he couldn't see his power. In Exodus 4, 10 and 11, Moses said, Lord, I am not a good speaker. I have never been. I am slow to speak and have a slow tongue. But God said to Moses, who made man's mouth? Who made the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Was it not I? Moses had forgotten how extraordinary God was. Even as he stood in the midst of his wonder and glory, he couldn't see his power. And I fear the same thing has happened to us as a church today. Every day we stand in the midst of God's wonder and glory, yet we think our limitations are too much for him to overcome. In a sermon by Louis Giglio, he talked about the biggest star in the known universe, Canis Majoris. It is so big that you can fit eight quadrillion Earths inside of it. That is the equivalent to covering the entire state of Texas with golf balls, 22 inches deep, yet our God holds that star in the palm of his hand. Why would we ever think that God cannot do something great through us? We serve an extraordinary God, and it's time for us to stop focusing on our limitations and remembering what he has already done. Remembering that he created the universe in six days, that he slayed the giant with the shepherd boy, that he shut the mouths of the lions and continues to transform lives today. There is nothing too difficult for our God, and it's time to remember that our faith is not in the Oval Office. Our faith lies in an extraordinary God. Amen. Amen. Now in this great moment of fear, the Lord shows something to Moses that we too must realize if we are going to be used to the extraordinary. In Exodus 4.17, the Lord said, and Moses, you'll take the staff in your hand and you will do the signs. Moses didn't think he had the gifts and talents to be used by God, but the Lord showed him his power through the most unexpected of vessels, a shepherd's staff. Just an average staff used for herding sheep, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, it became the hand of God. Throughout the entire word of God, the Lord has consistently used the least of people to do the most extraordinary of things. David was just a shepherd boy who was the least of his brothers. The apostle Paul was a Pharisee who murdered and hated Christians. The Lord did this to show that it was not the person, but the one who lived inside of them. Why did God use a small boy's lunch to feed 5,000? So that there would be no doubt where the power came from. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it says that God has used the weak and foolish things of this world to put to shame the mighty and wise, so that no man could boast in himself, but that all praise will go to God. The Lord will not share his glory with anyone. And when the lost are saved, the sick are healed, and the bound delivered, he wants there to be no doubt that he did it, and that he deserves all the praise and all the glory. God. On August 17, 2008, the world sat in silence as we waited to see if U.S. Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps could win a record eight gold medals. And in record time, he swam his way into history, becoming arguably the greatest Olympian of all time. We all watched him slice his way through the water and thought to ourselves that this man is truly extraordinary. But less than three months later, we sat perplexed as compromising images of Phelps began to plaster across the news and tabloids, showing that he was no more extraordinary than any of us. And why is that? Because none of us are extraordinary. Only God is extraordinary, and only through him can we see and do extraordinary things. We had become so focused on what this man did in the water that we forgot about the one who made the water. It wasn't the staff in Moses' hands. It was the tree the staff came from that God created. It wasn't the five smooth stones in David's sling. It was the rock of ages cleft for me, the stone the builders rejected, now becoming the cornerstone. It wasn't the three men in the fiery furnace. It was the fourth man who was a son of God. And it's not about us and what we can do. It's about God Almighty because he's the only one who can bring a miracle. He's the only one who can heal and mend our broken nation because he and he alone is extraordinary. Amen. Amen.